In this short video, I'm going to be going through how to go and answer a question on the new style GCSE biology papers, looking at respiration, some of the key things that are involved in it, and how to answer questions that look at investigations about respiration. One of the key new aspects on the new style paper is this is this importance or this emphasis that they're putting on looking at practical data and interpreting it and making some sorts of judgments from it so i think increasingly we are going to see more and more questions that go and look like this so like i said this is a question from one of the specimen papers as the real exams haven't run yet and we've got no past papers to look from so i'm going to go through each part talk through some of the key things that you need to think about when answering each part and hopefully after you'll be able to go have a go at the question yourself and when it comes to the real exam score those extra marks that will take you to or past the next grade boundary so the first part is going and talking about what is the chemical formula for glucose right the chemical formula for glucose is c6 h12o6 you need to make sure that you know what that chemical formula is don't go and put it off make sure you're making a flashcard on it within your revision and keep testing yourselves it's one of those key formulas that will come up again and again on the biology paper right following that we move on to figure one shows apparatus used to investigate aerobic respiration first thing that you need to be thinking about right aerobic respiration is normal respiration where we're taking in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide and water and we're reacting it with glucose so it shows set of apparatus we've got air going in going through lime water in flask A, some sort of wood lice it, they could replace that with any other sort of organism they might even replace it with plants in some cases and the lime water going back out through or the air going back out through some more lime water in flask B right so the lime water goes cloudy when carbon dioxide is added the fact that they've gone and told you that kind of implies that you're going to have to go and include that somewhere in your answer so after 10 minutes the lime water in flask b was cloudy but the lime water in flask a remains colorless explain why right this all focuses on the respiration that is happening from the wood lice when respiration occurs carbon dioxide is released so to answer this you need to talk about in flask a you get in air coming straight from the outside so there's going to be no extra carbon dioxide in it whereas in flask b you're going to have extra carbon dioxide made by the wood lice which will go and react with the lime water and turn it milky white proving that a the wood lice are respiring but b carbon dioxide is produced during respiration right moving on so flask a acts as a control for this investigation what is the purpose of a control right a control is there to prove that it's the wood lice or something that the wood lice is doing that is actually causing the change in the color of the lime water in flask b if the lime water in flask a had turned a milky white color then it wouldn't matter what the wood lice were doing what they were doing wouldn't be affecting it so the fact that in flask b is a different color to flask a kind of means that it's acting as a control it's proving that it's the wood lice that are carrying out the respiration so therefore are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide moving on so the student repeated the investigation with no wood lice describe what you would expect to see in flask a and flask b after 10 minutes right if there's no wood lice there's no respiration so there's going to be no excess carbon dioxide 
Right, this is one where people have slipped up on because you almost think it can't be as simple as it is. Because the answer is that in flask A, there would be no colour change. In flask B, there would be no colour change. There's no reason that you couldn't have the same answer for flask A and flask B. It's one of those times when you go and you're overcomplicating it for yourself and it doesn't really need it. So just to finish off, so aerobic respiration is another form of respiration in living organisms. What is produced during anaerobic respiration in humans? Right, it's, it's lactic acid. You just need to know that. And complete the following equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast. Right, remember, when yeast go and they respire anaerobically, they always produce carbon dioxide and alcohol. It doesn't matter whether it's talking about making bread or making beer or whatever context that they might go and put it in. Right, go back, watch any of the parts of the video again that you're unsure about. Remember that you've always got your notes to refer to and go have a go at this question and try and make the most of trying to squeeze every last mark out of it.